Hi, hello, this is MQHOJ. Oh, I like it. It doesn't really roll off that tongue. We'll get there, we'll get there. <laughs> I'm the M in the MQHOJ. If you didn't figure that out, it's the only name in the title. And today we are talking about Slenderman. This is the story of Slenderman stabbings, but to understand that we need to understand who Slenderman is as a boogeyman, how did he come about, and well, how did these stabbings come about, like what inspired them. To understand how that came about, we need to break down who Slenderman is, or rather who people think it is because it's not existent. But unlike many boogeymen, Slenderman actually has date and place of birth. Uh, place of birth is something awful for him, and date of birth is... I forgot. <laughs> so gosh. Okay. And the date of birth is June the 8th, 2009. I was born June the 8th, 2009, and it was created by Eric Knudsen on this forum. Sending it out to all the boogeymen because it is created on the internet is kind of very much open to interpretation. So, first of all, its face is like blank without any characteristics, so it's kind of scary in that way because it can be whatever you want it to be. In terms of like form, it is usually like represented as this like disproportionately tall man, so he's usually like about 8 feet tall with like really long limbs, so like really long arms and legs, and then like kind of like small weird torso, and usually like the face you can't see. Um, it is usually spotted, well, by spotted, it's usually represented, shown on the forums, not spotted, within forests, and it is said that he can teleport as well. Mm, what else is important? What else is important? Slenderman falls into that category. It's not like a traditional boogeyman that I don't know your parents would use to scare you into coming, you know, to like coming home on time or into bed on time. It is more of like children going out there and like visualizing themselves and what like Slenderman represents for them. It is truly the millennial kind of boogeyman. Like some people went really deep on the forums, they even say that. There are like three characteristics that tie Slenderman to the folklore. So like collectivity, meaning it's created by a collective, rather than like a single individual. So it highly depends on what other people portray Slenderman as on these forums. Variability, meaning the story changes depending on the teller. Again, this is why it's not really definite what Slenderman does. And performance, meaning that the storyteller's narrative changes to reflect the responses of his or her audience. Now, Sandman doesn't directly kill. It's more like he compels others to do these bad deeds for him. And this is how we arrive to the story of today, which is Slenderman's Steppings. And what happened five years after Slenderman has been coined, born, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to do a bit of a teaser and start with a trial. So, in 2014, two girls, Morgan Geyser and Anita Weyer, have been charged for the attempted murder on their friend, Peyton Leutner. Their defense was that the Slenderman can watch them, can teleport, and they have killed in his name. Anissa explained to me that to prove yourself worthy to Slender, you would have to kill somebody. Both of them got to spend at least three years in a psychiatric institution, followed by a prison sentence. Maya got 25 years to life, and Geyser got 40 years to life. Geyser was actually diagnosed with the early onset of schizophrenia while, while in custody, so she got 40 to life but it kind of depends on like the resolution of the symptoms, so she might get released after just spending 40 years in prison. Oh, and uh, Pete one, 
they were both 12 when they've done this. So Wire will definitely not be out by the age of 37. And Geyser will serve at least until 53 because she kind of turned 13 that year. What have they done to deserve these sentences? And how come that they suddenly were that obsessed with Slenderman to kill him in his name? Okay, let's break it down. The morning after Geyser's 12th birthday party that the girls have spent together, Peyton Leutner has been spotted by the cyclist, fallen down on the road, bleeding from her stab wounds. So he immediately called 911 and got her to the hospital. Her parents have actually given interviews and they were just freaking out that like, she will not be able to make it out of that alive. At the hospital, she has undergone surgery for the 19th of her stab wounds. The doctors have actually said that like some of her stab wounds have protruded through the major organs and there was one that was just a millimeter away from one of her arteries. So the stab wounds on her arms were superficial. Every single one on her torso has caused some damage to her organs and almost went through her heart. As soon as Peyton woke up in the hospital, she immediately started freaking out and asked like, have you found them? Are they still out? Have you gotten them? And luckily for her, the police at that point realized that there were only two other girls that were with her in the park, out of which she crawled onto the road while stabbed. So at that point, Geyser and Wire were in the police custody. Morgan seemed like she was very calm, very relaxed. I mean, she's at a police department and she's covered in blood. And this is like a normal day for her. It seemed like it really concerned her too much if she was dead or alive. Peyton left the hospital about seven days after the incident. She went back to school that September. And later when she made interviews and has been asked about this and about like whether she finds that the girls got what they deserved in terms of sentence, she said yes, because they were charged as adults. Because this has been an adult crime. You know, if they have stolen, candy from a shop. Yes, that would have been considered a child's crime, but because they attempted to murder her friend, that is an adult crime, and even though they were minors, they should have been treated as adults in the court of law. The reason why those sentences might have been really severe as well is because there has been some serious premeditation here. So let's go to the actual crime and what really happened. It was Geyser's 12th birthday party the night before. And during that day, the girls have went out roller skating, they have went out had frozen yogurt, you know, doing like all the teenage stuff, went out to town, and then they went to Geyser's house to have a slumber party. I can never think of a slumber party innocently any longer. Brittany, I thank you for that. Okay, move on. <laughs> And looking back at it, what Peyton found weird, Geyser usually was the one to want to stay awake the whole night when she was with her friends. But that particular night, she really just wanted for them all to go to sleep. And looking back on it, it was very obvious that the girls, the two girls actually planned to kill Peyton during her sleep that day. But they have figured out probably that it would either, it would be too messy, too obvious, Again, I have no idea what was going on for this girl's head. They just decide to postpone it to the next morning. And I just cannot picture that, like, their friend is sleeping there. And they have clearly decided to kill him in their sleep. So they must have, like, they must be having a conversation on the side while her friend is asleep. Like, trying to figure out when and where to kill her again. Like, rearranging this killing. The next morning, the girls have breakfast and like usually Geyser's mom wouldn't allow her to go out anywhere on her own because she was with her friends. They decided to go to the park and Geyser insists that they start playing hide and seek and Peyton wasn't like feeling it but it's okay, both of them were up for it so she's like, okay, yeah, let's play hide and seek for a while and Geyser is kind of like skedaddling to try to hide while convinces Peyton Leutner to go on the ground and like cover herself with leaves like with leaves and branches to hide herself better which again is just so freaky morbid also isn't the whole point of the hide and seek for all of you to hide and then play seek not for one to help other to hide better than the other 
what I'm trying to say here is that there have been so many moments where these two would have stopped what they were doing. Or just even, or even like if they believed in their Sunday Money fans, just like searched for help them and spoken to her mom or something about, hey, is this Sunday Money, is it real? I feel it's possessing me, I feel it's asking me to kill me. That's why I feel the jury decided that the sentence should be this high because there have been so much premeditation here. Obviously, because they're not actually trying to help her hide, now they have um, Peyton on the ground and it's easier for them to stab her. So, Kaiser brought the kitchen knife from her own kitchen that morning. She just snuck it while they were eating donuts in the kitchen for breakfast. And she starts stabbing her. Like, Wire was kind of helping, but wasn't the one that was actively stabbing. So it was guys that had stabbed her 19 times. And then they just left her on the ground and left her for dead and have left. Obviously, they were caught very easily because they came home. It coincided that Loitan was found by the cyclist on the road because she managed to crawl out of the forest, luckily, on the road for her to be found. And because, well, it coincided that these two have returned home without her friend. And they were the last two people that were seen with her. Now, as to the motive and like their background and how this Slenderman actually come into the story. So, at first, it was just Leutner and Geyser that were friends. And Leutner said that she actually befriended Geyser because she felt like Geyser was really lonely, you know, always sitting by herself at school. She was like, everybody deserves to have a friend. So, she was like, yeah, let's become friends. And they were like playing innocently, you know, going to each other's houses. And doing all the typical teenage stuff until Geyser became really interested in Slenderman. And she was sort of trying to impose that interest onto Peyton. But Peyton luckily actually went to her parents and like went to her mom and she was like, this is freaking me out. Like, not everybody's into true crime, okay? Not everybody's into this shit. So like she went to her mom and was like, hey, is Slenderman real? Is this creature, is this being real? Because it's scaring me. And her mom said, like, no, it's just like a fictional boogeyman. It's definitely not real. Whereas, you know, Geyser all this time has been trying to convince her and was still talking about it. So Peyton kind of, like, realized, you know, she wants to distance herself a bit once she talks about it. And I just tell her, like, yeah, let's not, you know, I'm not the person you should share this interest with. Where... And this is where Wire came into the picture. This is that moment where the third friend comes into the picture. And then there's like certain toxic combination. There's some jealousy around. So Wire came into the picture and she was the one that was even more obsessed with Slenderman than Geyser was. She kind of felt like Peyton was the odd one out because she wasn't fitting into this newfound interest. Peyton actually this whole time stayed friends with Morgan because until that point she felt like Morgan had nobody. And then now she didn't mind having another person in the picture. She finally saw the chance to kind of exclude herself from this Slenderman talk because she also found Wire really mean to her. Like it was one thing to just try to impose the interest, but Wire was actually like really pressing on it and really insisting that Slenderman is real. One weird bit is when Peyton actually heard about why guys stabbed her, which was like in the name of Slenderman. She says it didn't surprise her at all because they believed into this for so long and like so hard that she actually knew that they would do something like this to appease this image of Slenderman and that they would do anything for it. So as to motives, I genuinely think there are some mental health issues involved here because there are so many people like you and me who hear about Slenderman, read about it, read all this creepypasta, hear about so many other boogeymen, and yet don't kill in the name of it, don't kill for it, or for anybody for that matter. So I do feel there are some like mental issues, which kind of were diagnosed in the end as well. But I would love to know what you guys think, so drop the comments down below, let me know, you know, do you feel like the sentence was justified? Do you think that like, they should have been tried as me, as pagers? Do you feel they should have been tried in the adult court? Again, what do you think that the motives were behind this? If you are a teenager watching this, do you feel somebody in your friend group needs that mental health support because they genuinely believe something like Slenderman is real? Reach out to them, hopefully their parents as well. Because you can prevent something like this from happening then. 
But um, that's it for me this time, I think. I think, yeah, let me know what I've skipped. Probably a lot. I try to like simplify it, summarize it, merge it into one concise packed story. I'm also sweating because it's 40 degrees here in London for like two days. So uh, I'm gonna get the fuck out and go into the sunshine and uh, bye.